I know. I'm gonna Tom, get the f clip and get the f out of here. But I need a break from filming. Okay, then then go eat some lunch. Virtual reality. Hi, I'm Danny. And I'm Evan. And we are feeling good as gold this week because what a Bravo week it was. I mean, Evan, we're good as gold, but also a little tired. We are a little tired. We are smack dab in the middle of this three-part Vanderpump Rules season 10 reunion. And I got to say, I I didn't think that anything could have outdone part one, but part two was so juicy, so explosive, starting with Tom Sandoval yelling at production because they wouldn't allow him to film to, to have a, a private chat with Raquel off camera. And it's like, you have been on TV for more than a decade, Tom Sandoval. Have you forgotten the rules of reality TV? And also, did you forget that, of course, they're going to include someone having a freak out about wanting to be off camera on camera for the reunion that is sort of focusing around the mess you made? Because why would they be like, oh, the two people that everybody is mad at? Yeah, go talk. Oh, my God. Where's <laughs> right. the... Go! Oh. And there is so much discussion about him recently. Like, does he coach Raquel? Was he trying to coach Ariana? I just talked, I just to, talked her. to her so you could coach her. And when what she, what's I'm the not name coaching she anybody. Yeah, just, right. Because you used to try to coach me. About he must know that we're all looking at him like you're just trying to coach this girl and have a moment to get your story straight, which Raquel even said during the one on one with Andy that he that he and her, they were trying to get mm -hmm. their story straight. By getting your story straight, you were going to maybe truncate how long it had been going on or something. Yeah. Before they told Ariana about their affair, because apparently they were hoping to downplay the length of it to, I guess, not hurt Ariana. I don't know. So this it seems to be a pattern. Sandoval likes to get his story straight. Mm -hmm. And it is so insane that one-on-one -on -one when Ariana's like, yeah, and Andy, don't you think it's weird? Ariana, like, didn't push to question me more. What? And Andy's like, so... Are you trying to blame her for not being like Dora the Explorer looking for where her man is at night? It was so, it, with the little blazer on, she really went in. She was hoping for a legally blonde moment, but the only person who really legally blonded was Sheena Shea, as we saw her leaving the court, getting that document all taken care of. So I'm glad she at least had her moment, but I felt so bad for she, she this episode. I know, I know. Watching her cry and seeing that the devastation Mm -hmm. of the the frivolous restraining order put on her and having this for the last a few weeks first of all the the betrayal of two of my best friends that is heartbreaking in itself but then to throw all of this on top of it when i did nothing but take care of her and how it impacted her life at home with her daughter she said that summer started hyperventilating at the sight of her mom having a breakdown that it just was really taking its toll on her. And then watching Raquel oh. watch from the trailer 100 yards away, she was like, oh, I'm like starting to have regrets. Like, like I can't believe that's like what happened. And she's like, should I have written her a letter? It's like, we know you love sending letters, babe. <laughs> so you shoulda, you coulda, but you didn't. And then even Tom Sandoval was kind of getting emotional about the Sheena thing. And that's when Ariana was like, you guys are my friends. Like she went full. I never watched Game of Thrones, but I feel she was giving Queen of Dragons situation where she's like, you guys are not friends. What is going on? So it's just going to get even where I really, because part three is when Raquel is there for the full hour. And I do, I was laughing when she walked out on stage, all I was thinking in my head was like the, hey, how y'all doing? Because <laughs> yeah. it's just her like clickety, clackety, clickety, clackety. Everyone <laughs> silently staring at her. It reminded me of that meme that goes around on the internet when Britney is walking onto the set of Ellen and they <laughs> take away the, the sound from the audience. And it's just so, I don't know what it was about Raquel's walk, maybe because it was like the ultimate walk of shame in this mm. moment, but it was so awkward watching her clickety clacketing over to her chair and then also did you catch that there was this moment where they were going to have Raquel sit next to Sandoval and Ariana was like oh no she'll be at the end Ariana was calling the shots I love oh Ariana was in the Andy seat she really was like no I know what's going on and also I also think that was for the best because I don't know if Schwartz even knew what 
pill he was taking because he was said it was Xanax and he said it was Lux. So I mean, I don't know if he should have been moving around that much. So I think it was good he was staying in his seat. Yeah, ni- nice and seated, Schwartzy. I mean, but- I it's a good buffer to have between them. I guess maybe in some like if if Sandoval tried to like whisper some coaching to her, like yes. at least like Sand like Schwartz was there to prevent any coaching from. I honestly feel that's why Ariana a didn't want them to have like a little couple moment right there, and also b that they could not give any signals because even when she was walking out, Sandoval was like green light, green light. I'm like, is that code for something? He kept yeah, saying so many things that I was like, I don't really know what you're getting at. Like the la la iud. I was like. What are any yes. of the points you're trying to make? If you if you guys didn't hear this right at, at sort of the beginning of this uh, part two of the reunion, Sandoval says something really weird like, Talala, the, you took your IUD out the moment you found out Stasi was pregnant. And I'm like, what does that mean? Is that implying that Lala had some sort of like pregnancy pact with Stasi? Stasi, because if she did, like, I'm all for that. I, I'm like, they were just some blondes having babies. I don't know. I, I and it was just such a random, I'm like, what are you trying to prove with that? Yeah. I also it, wonder if Lala heard him because I feel like if had Lala heard him, she oh. would have gone full on Apex Predator and gathered him real quick. Bringing up Ocean, it would have been game over. Yeah. And oh. I mean, that confused us. That line confused us almost as much as the Marge confused Teresa when she said tree stomps. You and your tree stumps. Oh my God, guys. Tree stump? Look at what you look like. I'm not calling you a tree stump. Okay. Woo! But I feel like anything confuses Teresa. And I I feel like even the, the sort of reverberations of part one of the New Jersey season 13 reunion, it's like poor Teresa even when she's clapping back at fans because it seems that the the fans are seeing the power of Melissa Gorga and they are being very loud on social media and praising Gorga for the queen Mm -hmm. that she is and the way that she handled Teresa at the reunion but then when Teresa came for the fans for supporting Melissa she started repeating lines that she said on the reunion like are we watching the same show like she she, like we've been there done that tree Oh, well, that was the theme of part one where it's like, wait, we're talking about how Melissa got on the show. I was like, didn't you guys squash that on Ultimate Girls Trip season one? And I like when uh, the one part where Teresa did make me laugh, though, was when Jennifer Aiden was like, Andy, you just have to admit that she DM'd you. And Teresa's like, no, she didn't DM. Like, what's going on? Nobody knew what battle they were fighting, it seemed, on the Jersey reunion. Well, I I did like that um, amidst the chaos and and all the battles that were going on, Andy did offer some clarification in this whole debacle. I mean, Teresa has said, like, you wanted to come on the show to, like, destroy me and blindside me, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And Andy's like, no, like, Melissa was cute. She was fun. And she had a double staircase. And we love that. Did Melissa ever contact you to try to get on the show? No, I I don't. No, 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 no. I, I have no recollection of that. All I know is two things. She was cute. Joe was funny. They had a double staircase like you guys, <laughs> which I was like, oh, that's funny. What more can you want? As long as you got the double staircase. Well, I hope Laura Lee Jensen's taking notes and doing some restorations for her. I don't know what kind of staircase she's got working with, but <laughs> she's been trying so hard and failing so much to get on this show. I don't really, I don't really see, even if she gets a double staircase, I don't think she will be holding a meat ball. No, no. I mean, I think that even Jennifer Aiden, she built her whole house to get on the show. And I'm trying to, th- she certainly has a double staircase, doesn't she? I you think she's fine. Yeah, we have five double staircases. She's got a basketball <laughs> court. House. Who was the MVP? Of part of part one of the New Jersey reunion, in your opinion, Danny, it's always Dolores because she was just sitting there, straight shooter. Because she opened up a little bit, and she also had no time for bullshit. Because when uh, Rachel and Danielle were going back and forth, and what Andy even called the stupidest fight, Dolores was like, "Here's what you guys have to do, and you have to stop this." This is so minute and stupid, and the more the insults start coming, the worse it's going to get. Just leave it behind. This was not worth it. Dolores, I feel, is gearing up. And we always, and it seems even when she was on our live show, she kind of is MVP of Jersey when she is kind of like dictating when things are ending. Cause she even turned to Danielle when Melissa and Teresa were going out of it. Just like, this story is so old. I'm over it. So she, she, she took my crown. How about you though? 
Uh, I think Melissa. I, I think mm-hmm. Melissa mm-hmm. was truly the star of the reunion. With the Rocky yacht. For me, yes, yes, she was ready to fight. She was ready to rumble. Well, honestly, she didn't even really fight. I think she just the the strength in Melissa's performance was just laying out the facts. That's true. It was facts versus fiction versus Jacqueline Larita, which I love. Even Andy was like, <laughs> "We were bringing up Jacqueline Larita." Oh, Jacqueline Larita. Larita? Yes. I haven't seen yes. her in ten years. But it really all ties together. With what went down at our lo- our most recent live show, I know, I know. Yeah, so obviously, if you were at our live show, you saw or, or checked out the the coverage from our live show. Caroline Manzo said that she was in the room with the person who called the feds on the Judices with all the fraud stuff, but she and Lauren were like, "We're never going to reveal who it is." Now at the reunion, Teresa's like, "I think the." that Melissa and Joe Gorga had something to do with it because apparently the person with Joe Judice's like business associate. And Melissa's like, I don't even know who that is. Right. So like that part is really confusing. Like Teresa said that they were like talking to him. I'm also, so if that is the guy who did in fact call the feds on Teresa and juicy Joe was Caroline friends with this man. I mean, I guess like enough to be in the same room with him allegedly, if that is the person she was talking about i know well that's because it was my favorite like i love on i i didn't call the fbi but i know who did and lauren's like but we're not rats but even i think lauren manzo even like commented on a tiktok or something and said they weren't talking about the gorgas so i don't really know if they're if we'll ever find out who called the fbi on them i i i at this point if it's coming up at this reunion season 13 we gotta just someone just gotta tell us Right. We've waited way too long. Like, come on. Like, wh- who, at this point, who really cares? But yeah, Lauren did say it was definitely not the Gorgas because when when Caroline did make those comments at our live show, a lot of the, the tree yeah. stumps were quick to say, oh, it was definitely Melissa and Joe. But Lauren took to TikTok to shut those rumors down. She was like, it was not the Gorgas. We love them. Like, they're, they have nothing to do with this. So. But who else could it be? I'm like, I'm trying to think of those, like, those season housewives. Like, I, 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 some I, I just need Lauren to like maybe have some martinis and just tell us. Yeah, like meet meet us back at City Winery, babe. Oh, any time, but it has to be after five o'clock because unlike uh Lindsay and Carl, <laughs> we have jobs. Well, according to Paige. They just lie and they spin everything. Isn't this a lot of money to I be spending for a lie? Yeah, that's why I'm confused because neither of you have jobs. Oh my god, that summer house reunion was Ooh everything and more i think that summer house unfortunately has been thwarted by vanderpump rules this season because they've been airing simultaneously and of course you know the scandal about that's just you can't that, that is the moment even because uh, even carl being like Paige, you're dating the biggest liar on bravo and everyone's like um well hey well it's so funny everyone said tom sandoval because i was like john shaw and then <laughs> I was like, okay, I was like, guys, like, Scandable's one thing. I think Jen Shaw's gonna take the cake for biggest liar in my book, but yes. We should have like a competition series, like Bravo's biggest liar. Oh my god, it's like the biggest loser, but the biggest liar. Yeah, I like, yeah, okay. Indeed. Jillian Michaels, like, I'll come, I'll I'll host it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, or a page. Paige would be a great, a great co-host on on, like on that show because she has opinions and she is not afraid to share them and i honestly i live for her commentary it is so entertaining but someone did make a a good observation on twitter i I think it was that you know Paige doesn't really interact with Lindsay during the season and that's true they're not no they're not close they're not friends why would they but then she just kind of like comes in guns a blazing at the reunion and I don't know if I disagree with that approach. I just thought it was like an interesting well, observation. She's so not pressed while they're filming, but then a couple months pass and she's ready to rock. That's my thing. Cause it would be interesting to watch them have conflict throughout filming in that house. Cause then I'm like, okay, there's more like layers to this versus like, I just hate this girl. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, Jennifer Aiden and Marge, we know they're walking into the reunion. We know why they're mad at each other. We know they've had a fight at every single dinner they've gone to. We get the backstory and the context and, you know, some of the liners that each of them give versus I feel like like they didn't even really have like confessional shade to one another. 
Yeah. Besides no. the, um, she wore a shoulder patch at the beach. <laughs> Right, which honestly, I I can see how that would activate Lindsay, but I'm just trying to think what could activate Paige to be so um, saucy. I, and I yeah. guess maybe it's just watching Lindsay interact with the rest of the house and seeing how she navigates friendships because- Name I, a girl on the show you talk to. Sans the people you've known for six months. It's obvious to everyone that Paige and Lindsay just kind of like move through the show a little differently. That very, very differently. It's a very interesting thing. So I'm curious to see what more explodes from both sides of those couches um, next week. But I also cannot wait to keep on because I mean, like there's 900 shows on Embravo right now, but Summer House Martha's Vineyard, everybody. If you're also not watching that, I don't know what you're doing because there's dog drama, there's relationship drama, there's laundry drama, there's, there's so poop much drama. There, yeah, there there is poop drama. Interpret that exactly how it sounds because that is exactly <laughs> what it is. And, and people are getting voted off survivor style. Like it's so like every episode is so wildly entertaining and dramatic and everyone is gorgeous, which kind of makes up for like the 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 poop. The poop. Yes, there's there's layers and levels and fabulous looks. So to wet the whistles of the Summer House Martha Vineyard fans, we have two exclusive interviews coming out, one tomorrow and one on Tuesday uh, from some of the faves from the cast. And spoiler alert, one is dating a German guy and he also is in the interview. <laughs>